It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Box Raw. Uh, delighted to be joined by Dalton Smith. Uh, Dalton, I think before we say anything, I've got to say hello to your granddad. Uh, what's his name again? Because I know he watches all your interviews. Brian, shout out to my granddad. Because <laughs> <laughs> he'd be watching this. I met him at the uh, recent GBM show and uh, the guy looks good, fit and healthy and he, he's mad about boxing. Mate, he's the most passionate man about boxing, especially anyone who's in the gym. And obviously he's like my biggest fan. So yeah, he keeps, uh, keeps an eye on everything. He's, um, I would say he's like the godfather of the gym, so shout out to Grandad. And you know what, I'll tell you what it reminds me of, because I went to Robert Garcia's gym, um, I've been there a few times, and uh, Robert Garcia's dad, I don't know if you've ever seen him, the old yeah, guy, he looks just like Robert, yeah, yeah. but with white hair. It's the same sort of vibe, he just comes, and, he's got his own couch, he comes and just sits and just watches everything, Watch. not say anything. Yeah, that's it, just observes, watches over everything, so yeah. Yeah, your dad said that's where he's got his boxing knowledge from. Um, before we talk about anything, fights, news, etc. You know, it's been a while since I spoke to you. Since you started like main eventing fights and obviously becoming the name, you know, you're not that guy that's fighting as chief support or down the card. Uh, has life changed for you? Like, you know, um, the way you live, the car you drive and just generally? Apart from probably a few upgrades in like a new car and stuff like that. But, you know, my life's still the same. You know, still got the same... Um, friends around me you probably get noticed a little bit more when you're out and about but no um, life's still the same keep it simple I, I, just cu out of curiosity what car did you upgrade from and to i upgraded from a peugeot partner van to a, a land rover defender so yeah a bit of an upgrade I think I've seen it outside. Um, and he said, you know, people coming up to you, how, how are you finding that because some people don't like that uh, you know people approaching you no you've got to you've got to take it as a blessing, you know, when people are wanting to come and have a picture, it's like, you know, it's, it's a feel good factor. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I don't get these people who can turn somebody away for a picture. Like, like it's a picture at the end of the day, somebody wants something signing. Like you should feel blessed that somebody wants to show, come and show love and support towards you like that. So yeah, I don't mind it. What about the ones that ask you questions about boxing and opinions and then talk to you about Adrian Fury? Oh, do you know what? You, you tend to usually get them if you're on a night out um, you know, it gets pest. They spit in your face. Yeah, that's it, and they sat in your ear. So that's why I stay away from nightclubs and um, I stay away from the nightlife. Um, like I say, live a simple life. But yeah, it's obviously every people are gonna come up. They're gonna be interested. Um, they want to ask you questions. They want your opinion on certain stuff. But usually, it's the same, it's the same questions. But like I say, you've got to take it as it comes. Now, I was watching the interview you did with Andy McCart yesterday, and I think he said, you know, you, you had a few options before you, you got to the point of picking Zepeda. So, just out of curiosity, which other names were kind of put to you before, you know, you chose to fight him? I couldn't remember a couple of the names, but there's like Pedraza, um, obviously there's Zepeda, there's a couple of other names in there. Um, and the Zepeda was the biggest name what stood out for me, so that's why we took it. Just, uh, just Dalton. Doing an interview. <laughs> um, so um, obviously Zapida's, uh, he's got, I think he's got two wins in the last four fights, but obviously he's fought at really high caliber. The both losses are coming you know, to Richard Hitchens and um, Regis Progre, both were level fighters. Um, his last win was funnily enough against uh, uh, an Indian guy called Niraj Goya, who I don't know if you saw yesterday, just by chance, went viral with that video with the uh, Jake Paul. Paul yeah. Is that who it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. do you know what? I, I never did, I didn't click on to be fair, but I did see the video with Jake Paul, yeah. I did see that. You find it mad that um, obviously that was um, Zepeda's last win, you know, two fights ago, and obviously that was at what super lightweight, and that guy who was a super lightweight now wants to fight Jake Paul, who's a cruiserweight. Something like that, yeah. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so Zepeda and you discussed it the other day. Mexicans, when they, whenever they come to the UK, you know, they've caused a lot of upsets. Um, what do you think is the thing that you got to watch out the most about Zepeda? Because he's not like a, you know, what you'd imagine just come forward brawler. You're the guy who can box. Yeah, you know, he can do a bit of, bit of both. He can box and, like I say, he can fight. So, you know, I've just got to be wary of anything. What, like, it's a fight. It's a 12-round fight. You've got to be switched on from your first belt to the last. To the last. But, um, you know, I, I believe I'm at a stage in my career now where I'm just starting to come into my prime a little bit. Um, and I, st I still think I'm, I'm still learning loads. Like I've, I've got a long road ahead of me. Um, 
But I just feel like now is th with this fight, you know, I'm able to show the bo bo the wider boxing world what Dalton Smith can do, and um, like I said, mix it with the with the with the world level fighters. Uh, and the other thing you got to watch out for as well, you know, the guy is a puncher on record, uh, four losses at high level, um, and obviously your, your own recent form as well. How do you feel that is in the lead up to this? Obviously, you had them two fights where people were starting to become a little bit critical of you. You know, the Casey Benjamin fight. You know, I think people kind of underestimated how good Casey Benjamin is. To be fair, and obviously the Billy Ellington fight. I think people's assumptions were that you'd stop Billy, but obviously he gave you a hard fight. But then you got the knockout against Max oh, Wilson. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think people, uh, no, um, easy fight, sorry. Uh, but obviously Maxwell, you know, you, you got a, a viral knockout. So um, how do you think them kind of fights have prepared you for, for this moment? You know, every fight's a fight what, um, you know, makes you in to, to where you are. You, like you say, you don't box for a world title your first fight. Everything's a progression, you're learning. And obviously not only that, we're younger, we're maturing as we're fighters. Um, we're learning what we need to do in and out of the ring. Um, like I said, everything's a process to get us to where we eventually want to be. And um, like I say, you can see like my last performance um, there. You know, my maturity is growing. I'm I'm growing into that mature fighter now. So, like I said, I don't really listen too much about the critics. I always know what I need to do, and I'm and I'm confident, and I know what where my abilities can take me. Uh, it's worth highlighting as well, and if you come out and beat uh, Jose Zabeda quite easily, you know, and I hope nobody says, oh, he was done or anything like that, because you've only got to go through his record and you can see literally in the last three years, he's been very active, fought at a high level, won pretty much all the fights apart from Richardson Hitchens, who was incredibly good. And obviously Regis Progre, who was like a top five, you know, he was a pan for pan fighter a year ago. So it's worth highlighting that. So I hope, you know, if, as long as you win, people give you the credit that you, you deserve. Yeah, that's it. But like I said, probably anything you do in boxing or in life, there's going to be critics. Um, people like to like to throw negative comments. But look, Zapita's a great fighter. I'm going to put on a great performance. And um, yeah, like I say, it's, this is a fight. What's going to put me up there and, and put me in the mix with the with the best at one forty. And, and I'll highlight some of them names: Jose Pedraza, uh, even Branchik, Hen Henry Lundy, Jose Vargas. They're all like good, good level fighters, and he beat all of them uh, until he come unstuck against uh, Regis. Um, obviously, uh, beyond this fight, um, on your card, obviously, you, you, you know, the tickets are almost sold out as well. Um, you've had some crazy support. Crazy. Do you know what? Like, I'm not even... You, you look at my socials, I'm not one to push stuff. You're not. <laughs> um, you're a very quiet guy, so where does that come from? Look, I always say, um, you know, the proof's in the pudding. I'll never do anything what's forced and what's unnatural. I try and be as real as I can, um, you know, and I believe like my support's real. The people who come out are genuine supporters. Um, and that just shows what Sheffield as a whole is like for supporting their own. And especially like you've seen over the years with the boxers, how they've come out and supported. But, you know, this fight especially, it's, it's crazy how the, t the tickets just went out. Um, you know, shout out to Dalton Smith Tickets, Bri Brown, who, who does a great job with them. Um, try, tries his best to, you know, do, get people the tickets they can. So yeah, big shout out to the supporters. You know, I wouldn't be able to put on big fights like this in my hometown without their support. So, you know, big love to them all. And just looking at the, and I know Boxec isn't an official governing body, but he always gives fans a bit of an idea. Have you recently looked at the top 10 uh, in the British rankings at Super Lightweight? Not really. And I don't really look at the, the rankings. So, uh, I'll let you have a look at it. So this is how they've got it. And I just want to see if you agree with it. And if not, where would you put yourself in? So that's how they've got it. Adam is free. Yeah, it's the, exactly the reason I don't look at rankings. <laughs> <laughs> so, Whoa, that's crazy. So just yeah. for people that are wondering, they've got Josh Taylor at one, Jack Cattrall two, Adam oh, Zim three. three. Two, definitely, that's, that's legit. Yeah. But we've got Adam Zim at three, O'Hara Davis at four, Harlem Eubank at five, and then yourself at six. So just tell them, obviously you don't agree with it. Where would you fit into that? Where would you put yourself? Well, I'm British champion, of course. It's got to be number three. Mm -hmm. Then I'd probably say O'Hara Davis, Adam Zim, Harlem Eubank, yeah. So we'll touch on uh, Adam Azim. I don't want to talk about him too much because I know you've got a big fight that you want to concentrate on, but fans will be intrigued to know. Um, obviously, you saw some tweets that went out from his account recently where you know he talked about 
uh, fighting Keishon Davies pay-per-view at, uh, at Wembley and then uh, there was something about um, being uh, effing desperate to fight a 21-year-old etc. Um, do, do you think them tweets come from him personally? Unless he's, I can't see the sec, can I? But I know the tweets got taken down. But you know, the f I can't remember what he said on the first tweet. But you know, it was, you know, I agreed with what he said. He had Ramadan and stuff coming up. But look, I'm probably bored of the questions now. I'm some, some like a broken record. But look, if the fight gets made, the fight gets made. I've got, I've got a bigger task on my hand um, to deal with in a couple of weeks. So yeah, my main focus is on that. Yeah, fair, fair point there, Dalton. Uh, I spoke to a few people and, you know, somebody gave me this comparison between both of you. Because um, obviously one of the arguments that will probably come up when this fight gets talked about down the line um, is, you know, who's going to get what percentages. I know that it's 50-50 with the current um, thing with the purse bids. Is um, somebody who's saying that Dalton Smith sells way more tickets, but he does more views on, on TV. Which one, do, one of them do you think is more important as a, as a boxer? Who does more views? Is yeah. it? He he apparently does more views uh, from the terrestrial audience, but you sell way more tickets at the gate. How can he do more views when he's not headlining the show? The the, the view the viewers tune into the show to watch the show, the headline. I'm the headline act. That's my show. So people aren't tuning to watch Adam Azim. They're tuning to watch the Sky Boxer Show. So that that's obviously not a legit comment. But but look, I'd be the one. We're definitely not doing it in. Um, What's the local yeah. football, Slough Football Club? You know what I mean? We're definitely not doing it there. Um, I didn't think it, had a football club. And if it's at any football club, it's at Sheffield Wednesday ground. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's all if sports. He could do this, he could do that. Um, look, if the fight gets made, the fight gets made. And just the last one, Johnny Nelson says he wants it to happen. And, and I hope it does happen next, you know, as long as you both are successful, like in the latter end of the year. I think Ben Shalom said he wants it to happen as well. So I think the only people we're waiting for are from Adam and, and, he, and his team. Um, so all, all I've got to ask is if he was watching this, because I'm hoping to catch up with him in the next few days. Um, if he's watching this right now, any message to him? What's happening, Adam? <laughs> Look, this... Everything's clickbait, isn't it? Everything's for views. Everything's, to, like I said, to, to get attention. Look, we're young lads. We know what we need to do. Um, I can't force somebody into making a fight. Um, but yeah, that was just a bit of clickbait for you, that then, isn't it? <laughs> No, but we say that, you know, because a lot of fighters always say that, I'll click big this, click big that, but I generally think it transpires into the, making the fight bigger and then you guys can demand more money from your promoter. So it's like a circle, vicious circle, where everyone benefits. Of course, and it, but it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. um, like I've said, I'll never do anything what's unnatural and not in my, in my nature. So I'll just carry on being who I am. Um, hopefully Adam can carry on being who he is. Um, and like I said, everything happens in... Everything happens in the right time and how it should happen. Um, you know, like I said, I, I'm here to take any fight. Mm. Whatever, the f whatever the biggest fights are, what the people demand, I'm here to take those fights. But like I said, I've said before, it takes two to tango. You can't force somebody into a fight, you know. I wish Adam the best in anything he does. Um, you know, I've got no bad blood there with him. At the end of the day, it's, I just want to prove I'm the number one. I, I want to be the best in it. In, in, in the country, in the world. So, you know, that's all it is. I'm never going to disrespect him, bad mouth him, because he's never done it to me. And to be honest, every time I see him, he's been respectful. Um, <clears throat> it's probably Ben Shalom who's probably d done the immature stunts over this fight, you know, just a few little things. So, so yeah, I'll only show respect to somebody who shows me respect. Well, like I said, I respect you both, and you're both great kids. And uh, I've got a feeling, I think, down the line eventually it will turn a little bit um nasty and i think the fans will enjoy that the last thing i want to ask you dalton is when i uh, speak to you about your dad obviously he brought you up from a young age so you probably know him better than anybody in this gym right now and just pulling up today i, I was just joking to your dad that he's going to need a multi-story car park outside there because the amount of fighters he's got mm -hmm. just tell me a little bit about your dad's journey did you ever think he'd end up being uh, one of these guys that's got so many fighters i know chantal cameron's recently joined uh, it's a mad stable in there to be honest i always knew like the journey would be like me and my dad and and, and whatnot uh, obviously you never know that he's going to build a stable stable up like he has and it's not only a stable way it's just our new fighters have come like you look at like janade he had sunny early uh, 
towards the end of his amateur career. Um, trying to think who else he's. So yeah, he's, took, he's got his, his own little stable, what he's had from amateurs and broke through. And then obviously the other fighters, what's coming, he's done a great job with them. But, but it's not only that, how the gym's grown. You've got Piers Goodgen, the other coach. He's got his own fighters doing great things. At, you know, he's, he's 26, 27. And I believe Pierce is going to be one of the, the one of the best coaches in the country as well. Once he's gaining all this experience and what he's doing now, um, but yeah, proud proud of what my dad's done. You know, he used to get slagged off a lot. Oh, Kitchen Fit is never going to do anything. He's never boxed in his life, but look, he works hard, and and everything he does for boxing is for his fighters and he's genuine. He'll never backstab anyone. He'll never rip anybody off. Um, so yeah, he's. I always say good good hearts always win, you know, and, that, and that's what I believe this gym is. Um, there's no favouritism, and like I say, fights come in. Whoever's got the the fight date first, that's who, who gets the most attention. It's not oh you can't fight on that date now because he's got a bigger fight. It doesn't work like that. There's no favouritism, you know. We're, we're we're all one in this gym, and yeah, pr proud of what he's done and how the gym's built up, and you know, it's only going to go on to bigger and better things. It's where you picked up something that I said you said there about you know your dad used to be a kitchen fitter and people said a kitchen fitter is not going to do anything and it's worth highlighting things like that because you you'll see like I think Ben Davison's had similar sort of stuff and he used to, I can't remember what job he used to do but it, it was something like similar um, uh, I think it was it was it a roofer or something building related and what he's gone and done in nine ten years and sometimes people don't realise it doesn't matter what you've done before yeah. it's the success you brought in the ring most definite and you know I'm. I'm a fan of Ben Davison as well. Um, I like the work he does, and he's, you know, he, I think he, he's this, he's kind of similar in the way how he goes about fights. He's very good at breaking down fights, how, you know, seeing it. Um, so yeah, like I said, do you know it goes to the old saying: don't believe what anybody s s says. Do you know what I mean? Like if somebody says you can't do something, don't let it dishearten you. You know, kill him with success. That that's the best thing to do, and that's what he's doing. So, so yeah, proud of him. Well, Dalton, appreciate your time. Um, good luck fight night, and I'll, I'll see you fight week. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.